The first thing most little kids grab in the morning are their toys or stuffed animals. But a terrifying number of children in some parts of the world, kids as young as two years old, grab something else, cigarettes. They're not playing with them, they're lighting up. Some up to 40 cigarettes a day. Who's to blame? Dan Harris follows the trail of smoke. This story begins with a thoroughly modern icon, the cherubic toddler now known all over the world as the smoking baby. 13 million people watch this YouTube clip of the two-year-old puffing hungrily on cigarette after cigarette with his family looking on. A two-year-old smoking a cigarette. You know what would get the kid to cut back on cigarettes for good? It's a lesser known treatment called don't give him any. <laughs> But while many people viewed this video as just another passing fascination in the age of YouTube, we heard that this child was actually the tip of the iceberg, just one part of a much larger story. So we traveled 10,000 miles to Indonesia to find the smoking baby. There he is. In a moment, we'll show you what happened when we caught up with him. But what we found along the way was even more alarming. This vast country is in the throes of an uncontrolled tobacco epidemic, and there is more than one smoking baby here. Watch as this two-year-old wakes up and lights up with the help of his own grandfather. I can't believe I'm breathing in a baby's cigarette smoke. Grandpa here told us the boy smokes because it tastes good, like bread with chocolate. Do you think it's good for you to be smoking, Cairo? His grandfather says the boy smokes two packs a day. And when he ventures outside, cigarette pack in hand, none of his neighbors seem to see any problem either. You don't think smoking is addictive and gives you lung cancer? Shouldn't you be doing everything possible to keep cigarettes away from him? Incredibly, he says he thinks it's okay as long as Kyrul drinks enough coffee with his cigarettes. Lest you conclude that this is some sort of fluke, take a look at seven-year-old Maulana. We met him one evening puffing away as he watched television in his two-room house. This kid smokes like a pro. Pretty incredible. How many cigarettes does he smoke every day? Yeah, yeah. Milana's mother says he smokes a pack a day. A pack a day? You know that cigarettes are deadly, right? Yeah. She says she knows, but if Milana doesn't smoke, he gets weak and starts crying. As you watch this child smoke, and as you consider the mini explosion of smoking babies here in Indonesia, the natural question is, how and why is this happening? Well, to begin with, watch this. We went out onto the streets with a public health worker and did an experiment. What about this little girl? If we gave her money, you think it would work? This eight-year-old buys a pack of cigarettes, no questions asked. Crazy. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Crazy, yes, but it is perfectly legal here for anybody of any age to buy cigarettes. They cost a dollar a pack, and there's almost no tobacco regulation. It's as if Indonesia is in an insane time warp, like America in the 1950s, when cigarette ads were everywhere, even on the anchor desk on the network news. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro country. Back then, perhaps the most iconic face of big tobacco was the Marlboro Man. Philip Morris, maker of Marlboro, stopped using him in America more than a decade ago, but the Marlboro Man has been riding free here in Indonesia. Am I the guy so cute? Too? You think the Marlboro Man is cute? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you think? You're smoking Marlboro? Why do you like Marlboro? Because it's the best. It's the best? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Are you a cowboy? <laughs> I want to be a cowboy. In 2005, Philip Morris International, which sells Marlboros around the world, bought Indonesia's third largest tobacco company called Samporna and very quickly turned it into number one, selling a mix of its best-known Western brands along with popular local ones. And right from the start, the company targeted young people, 
ABC News obtained internal documents that plot a strategy to market to young adults, making Samporna young, cool, and trendy, and the voice of a new generation of Indonesians. To that end, Philip Morris now does things here it could never do at home, sponsoring rock concerts and the Indonesian version of American Idol. Running TV ads featuring attractive young people. And speaking of attractive, Philip Morris also employs small armies of young women to go out and hawk its cigarettes. The company insists it's not targeting kids, but why then does it post billboards right near school? <laughs> this really brings home the point. This is the entrance to a school, and come with me. Just a few steps away from the entrance, there is this kiosk that is sponsored by Marlboro Lights. And at this kiosk, a student can come and buy an individual cigarette. They're only a dime a piece, and they even have a lighter on a string. Over and over, we asked Philip Morris International for an interview. They declined, sending us a pair of emails saying the company has repeatedly urged the government to ban tobacco sales to minors and has taken steps to restrict access to the events it sponsors. Unsatisfied with their answers, we decided to pay them a surprise visit at their headquarters in New York. I'm from ABC News. We're looking to interview somebody from Philip Morris International. Can you stop turn off the camera? Yes. Turn off the camera. All right, so uh, they've given us a number in Switzerland to call. Let's try it. I'm holding a picture right now of a Marlboro kiosk right outside of a school in Indonesia, and I'm curious how you guys can explain that. So you have nothing to say beyond the statement. With Philip Morris turning us down, is there anybody else accountable? We went to Indonesia's health minister, a Harvard-educated doctor. As mm. a public health mm. expert, as a doctor, as an Indonesian, mm -hmm. to see an American company mm. come in here and be so effective right. at convincing young people to smoke. Right. Of course, I, uh, I don't agree with them. I think they are uh, bad. I just don't like them, but uh, I will not, you know, say loudly like that, no? Astonishingly, she says there's not much else she can do. In a country where tobacco employs more than four million people, where lawmakers smoke openly on the floor of parliament, and farmers and even religious groups hold pro-tobacco rallies. In fact, this country is so tobacco crazy, there is now even something called the divine cigarette. 